Sometimes the tech news river can run pretty dry. And then Nvidia and AMD and Apple coming in, blow up the dam. Woo, come on, get your wetsuits on. We haven't did her night. Reviews went live for Nvidia's RTX 5070 yesterday and AMD's RX 9070 and 9070 XT this morning, finally giving GPU testers a chance to sleep. Riley, I didn't know you could wear a suit. I clean up nice. The LTT team found that the RX 9070 and 9070 XT trade blows with the RTX 5070 and 5070 Ti, respectively, in raster performance for way cheaper. He says, as if GPU prices are stable at all right now. That's what I do, I narrate my life in the third person. Team Red also delivered big improvements in ray tracing and the new RX 9000 exclusive FSR4 upscaling slash frame gen technology, although it still falls short of matching Nvidia's DLSS4. The biggest complaint with AMD's new card seems to be that AMD has pulled their own 7900 XTX trick again and made the $600 9070 XT too good of a deal compared to the $550 9070. But at least AMD didn't claim their base 70 tier card is equivalent to an RTX 4090. I mean, sure, in some games, the RTX 5070 can use multi-frame generation to put out more frames than a 4090 that's not using frame gen, as long as, like Indiana Jones, you like artifacts. It belongs in a museum. Speaking of frames, Hardware on Box notes that the RX 9070 XT's cost per frame is much better than the new Nvidia options, mostly because the AMD cards are an option, with all signs pointing to retailers actually having MSRP versions in stock. The same can't be said for the RTX 5070 Founders Edition, which no one has found. <laughs> and Nvidia delayed it at the last second yesterday. As for the third party cards, despite the bad reviews, they sold out immediately, ultimately making this an Nvidia launch that really could have just been an email. <laughs> Why am I here? Why did you pull me in? Interestingly, that is the approach Apple took this week when they launched upgraded Macs and iPads with nothing more than a press release and a couple of tweets from CEO Tim Cook or his assistant. Oh, I wanted a big event. It was Siri. The new base model MacBook Air is getting an M4 chip, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a $100 price drop. Starting at 1,000 USD, depending on your situation, this could be a no-brainer upgrade. The same can't be said for the new iPad Air, which seems to be literally the same device, but with an M3 chip with the same amount of cores as the M2, and support for Apple's floaty-looking Magic Keyboard. It does look quite floaty, though. The base model iPad has also been updated. It's getting an A16 chip, which lacks support for Apple intelligence. The killer feature I'm sure everyone's using and talking about, but I just can't hear them. The beefiest upgrade Apple announced though was the new Mac Studio models available with an M4 Max or the brand new M3 Ultra, which is Apple's term for when they take two Mac chips and fuse them together. Something they won't be doing with the M4, apparently, maybe later. Uh, because it lacks the ultra fusion connector. Oh, so not later. It just didn't have one. I don't... It just came like that. US President Donald Trump called for an end to the CHIPS Act, a Biden era law that subsidized chip makers' efforts to build facilities in the US, during the president's address to Congress this week, calling the CHIPS Act a horrible, a horrible thing. Worst we've ever seen, the, the last part was me. Just in case the act doesn't get repealed through Congress, the Trump administration is firing nearly half of the staff that would dish out the subsidies anyway. Because as evidenced by TSMC's recent commitment to build $100 billion worth of chip making facilities in the US over the next 20 years, you just need to threaten these companies with tariffs, not help them do the thing you want them to do. However, TSMC still says they won't make their most advanced chips in the US, and research by the Consumer Technology Association concluded that bringing all tech manufacturing back to the US is not feasible. And cutting Chips Act subsidies also wouldn't help American chip maker Intel, who's not exactly swimming in profits right now. Trump also said he could still levy tariffs on Taiwan, which would make chips more expensive for US consumers, adding on the effect of a now 20% tariff on Chinese goods. Meanwhile, Mexico and Canada, that's us, announced retaliatory tariffs in response to Trump's tariffs, which are supposed to go into effect today, although the talks are still ongoing with the pause on vehicle-related tariffs being approved just hours ago. You can't keep up with this stuff unless you watch our show. You never know what's gonna happen when you play tariffs, the fun flip-flopping game where nobody wins and everything's expensive. 
If you want to win, check out our sponsor, Jawa, the place where gamers like you can buy and sell gaming gear, PC components, and custom rigs from experienced builders at amazing prices, which is no small thing in a world where AMD and especially Nvidia's newest GPUs are either impossible to find or offensively overpriced. Hey, here's an idea, buy a used GPU for cheap. They're a way better value per dollar than the new stuff anyway, and you can offset the cost by selling your old GPU on Jawa. Heck, Jawa will just buy it off you directly. Get an instant quote by following the steps on their site. No need to make your posts or listings. It's super simple and frankly, it feels good. Go to lmg.gg slash sell to Jawa and get an instant offer for your old graphics card. I'm sorry for saying damn in the intro. That was crass and vulgar. Let me atone by offering these quick bits. YouTube has finally launched its rumored premium light subscription in the US, which will cost eight bucks for a month instead of the 14 charged for full premium. It'll remove ads from most videos, but keep them on for music content. It's a subscription tier that's just a little bit premium. Stay tuned for the plan that goes the other way. YouTube premium ultra, it removes everything, including the videos. Stay home. Google has announced its AI overview search feature has been updated to use the Gemini 2.0 model and can now be used by teens and non-signed in users. This will be fine. The tech giant is also rolling out a new experimental AI mode for search that seems like a middle ground between a normal Google search and just using Gemini. Because so many people were asking, how do I make searching the web more like asking someone to do it for me who's high out of their fucking mind? <laughs> it's more fun. According to Android Authority, Google's also updated Android Auto with preliminary support for Gemini, which usually warns users that it may make mistakes and tells them to verify the answers, which might not be easy to do when you're driving. Scientists at biotech company Colossal Sciences have genetically engineered woolly mice with hair much thicker and longer than normal mice as part of their efforts to bring woolly mammoths back into the world. Hold on, I'm calling it now. They're just gonna stop doing that and and be like a hair replacement therapy company. <laughs> That's it, just give bald people woolly hair. Look like a caveman. They say they're not just doing this as the setup to a movie where literally everything goes wrong. There is some evidence that adding mammoths or large animals back to Arctic environments could protect the permafrost, which could have knock-on effects on the economy or something. Colossal is also trying to bring back other extinct animals, including the dodo, the Tasmanian tiger, and who knows what else. But founder Ben Lamb insists, quote, it wouldn't end like Jurassic Park. I promise. The mice are in cages. Literally what could go wrong? And an Australian company called Cortical Labs has launched the CL1, a module that they call the world's first biological computer. Uh, that's us. Because it can run computations using human neuron cells attached to silicon hardware. Customers will be able to rent computing time on the chips or buy a CL1 unit for themselves. And trust me, using a calculator app hits different when it's powered by wet, squishy stuff maintained with tubes and valves instead of just dead circuits. Look, I don't mean to disparage this. It's genuinely cool research, as long as the chips aren't conscious and trying to escape. They have no mouth and they must scream, but they can't, what are they gonna do? Like Some people will pay extra for this. But don't you try to escape coming back here on Friday for more tech news, cause I won't let you. <laughs> nope. Nope. Uh... Come here.